Welcome everyone to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and we are running one of the industry's most important and largest hybrid tech events of the year with AWS and its ecosystem partners. We have two live sets, two remote studios, and over 100 guests on the program talking about the next decade in cloud innovation. We're very excited to be welcoming back one of our CUBE alumni, Peter McKay, the CEO of Sneak. He's here to talk about reinventing application security with Sneak. Peter, welcome back to the program. Oh, it's great to be back, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Great to talk to you. So my goodness, uh, Sneak has had an incredible uh, year. Last year, this year, I was just looking at your series F funding raised over 600 million in the month of September alone. Your valuation is, I think I saw uh, over 9.6 billion, which is nearly double yeah, eight, this eight year. 8.6, don't, don't rush it, 8.6, but yes, 8 it was double the last, time, the last time, yeah. It was, uh, so, yeah, it's been a, been a crazy 2021, that's for sure. So talk to me about some of the, before we get into what you guys are doing with AWS, yeah. let's talk about that, that uh, we talked about that funding. What are some of the strategic areas of investment? I know you've done a recent acquisition, CloudSkiff, but yep. where are you really going to be focusing the Series F funding? Yeah, I mean, we've been very aggressive in building out our platform. We you know, we have a, a great vision for where we see developer security evolving, and and we want to get there fast. A lot of our customers and developers are kind of pushing us in that direction of really consolidating a platform, and so. To get there quickly, we do it organically, building it ourselves, and we do it inorganically, where we can see other companies accelerate that roadmap. And so it's this combination of, you know, very aggressive organic expansion of both the breadth of our products, but also the depth, like adding more to our platform, but also the inorganic, because there's a lot of companies who have team and technologies that that are very complementary to what we're doing and allows us to con con continue to consolidate what is a very fragmented market in and around developer security. And so, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue to use the resources to, to accelerate that roadmap. The second part of it is uh, we, we're a little bit different than some companies where they kind of follow where the decision headquarters are of companies. For us, we follow developers. And um, so around the globe, multinational corporations have developers in the Philippines and Argentina and all around the world and we need to be there. And so, you know, expanding our community, expanding our, our customer success organization around the world is, is critical for us. And so that's a big part of our uh, kind of use of proceeds is the, you know, is the expansion of uh, our go to market as well. Peter, modern development has changed. Sneak's thing, you know, modern development has changed. So traditional AppSec doesn't apply anymore. A new approach is needed. Talk to me about why Sneak believes that and what that new approach is. Yeah, I mean, you just go back, to, you know, for 30 years, uh, you know, security was owned by application security teams. And, you know, that's when it was kind of this waterfall application development model where they develop an app and every three, six, nine months, and then the security teams would audit that application and kind of send all the, the feedback, here are all the issues, go fix it developers. And it was incredibly inefficient. And then you throw on top of this, this digital transformation and companies moving incredibly fast in building new applications, this agile development motion uh, and all the incredible tools that allow developers to develop really fast. But then you get this very slow, antiquated way of kind of testing it at the very end, right before you move the applications in production. So it just didn't scale. And so our con the concept is you, you that's way too late in the process. You really need to move security testing that into that developer environment from the IDE, the CICD, all the way through. So when you fin when you're developing along the way you're fixing the issues well ahead of time. And, and, and that's where modern development organizations are all this concept of shift left and building it in. You know, that's really the driver is moving security earlier and earlier in the software development life cycle. And that's key, especially you talked about the acceleration of digital transformation, but we've also seen the acceleration of the threat landscape in the last 20 months, there's been significant changes. The perimeter is so fragmented, it's expanding. I mean, the threat, the threat landscape goes all the way into outer space to low earth orbit these days. Yeah. Talk to me about that as kind of a facilitator or an accelerator of what Sneak is doing to really focus on shifting security lock with those developers. 
Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of, I think people are kind of waking up to the fact that, you know, up to this point, they've spent billions and billions of dollars on endpoint securities and, and runtime security and all the things that are kind of in production. And they're realizing that, okay, well, why am I still, why are we still vulnerable? Why are we still have these issues? And, and I think it's the realization that, you know, they're, they're waiting too long to fix it. And a lot of the issues are happening. They're either new issues with moving to the cloud or they're issues that happened well before it got into production. And, and so this realization that, you know, we've got to go earlier and earlier and, and, and fix these issues well before we go into production and don't, and don't wait till the very end. So I think that's really driving the market to this shift left. And you guys have actually kind of really pivoted your go-to-market model around that. Developers don't try and buy software the way that IT and security teams do. Talk to me about Sneak's GTM. Yeah, it's it's very it's very unique in that you know it's really marrying the you know this model developer security approach with the way developers want to buy. So we start with our community and we do free content and tools all around building awareness for the developer community. Uh, we have all of our products are free, so developers can try before they buy. And that's if you're truly a developer solution, you offer it free and let them use it. And then when they want to collaborate and they want to integrate and automate, that moves from free to paid. And so it's very much of this bottoms up motion that really allowed developers to try and buy. And, and it's that's a big, big driver for our business. This inbound motion drives 70% of our pipeline from them coming to us from this community. And then we come in kind of top down once they kind of get into different places and we go in through those security organizations, which are trying to shift left, trying to move security earlier and earlier. And we work together with the security organizations to help move that to the developer world. So you've got this bottoms up developer adoption, viral adoption of, of sneak within those organizations. Now with the top down kind of, and we, we become this bridge between the developer teams and engineering and the security teams that are all trying to move in the same direction. And so that's uh, that's kind of how this market has evolved. And we we're kind of, the, we're kind of that bridge for, for both those organizations. I was going to ask you about that. That bridge is critical, but also that bridge is a cultural change. I'm curious, yeah. how do you see organizations? It sounds like obviously you're at what over, I think six, 700 customers now, a couple million developers using the technology. Sure. So Thir that 1300 customers today. Yeah. 1300. Okay. Yeah. Wow. You have had a big year. 1300 yeah. customers, millions of developers using the technology. Talk to me a little bit about how you guys have figured out how to facilitate that cultural shift and shift security left, but also bridge between the IT and the security folks, which have tended to be on sort of opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, I think that the, the, the realization, I think a lot of people are very early on, and I was, we've been in the software uh, industry for 25 years. You know, nobody ever thought developers would care about security. Like there's no way developers really care about security. And really, if you think about it, if you asked a developer, would you rather develop a secure app or an insecure app? If all things were equal, of course they'd want it to be secure, but it needs to be easy. It needs to be like, don't slow me down. Whatever you do, don't slow me down. And so we have this, you know, hey, it's all about speed of development, speed, speed, speed. So for us, we need to make it embedded, like integrated completely into that software development lifecycle. So developers don't have to be security experts. Developers don't have to get out of their flow to do a, learn a different piece of software to figure out. It's all embedded into that process. So you can be fast and you can be agile, but you can also be secure at the same time. And so and part of that is embedding education and other things in there to lend that, that expansion of, you know, getting in the door and kind of building that, that momentum within these development communities all around the world. And so I think we've, we help all our customers with that kind of developer adoption and, you know, in working together with the security teams and engineering teams on how we roll that out around best practices and, and some of the things we've, we've learned over the six and a half years of doing this. Sounds very strategic and methodical and, and a great approach that is obviously quite successful. We talked about the growth trajectory, now 1,300 customers. Let's talk about what you guys are doing with AWS. Here we are at reInvent this year. Talk to me about the Sneak AWS partnership. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been really gaining momentum over the past year and a half. 
you know, almost two years now. It's, you know, AWS, a lot of the workloads, one of the reasons, you know, a lot of the applications aren't, don't go to the cloud is because of security issues um, and, and moving workloads to the cloud. Um, also developing applications in the cloud, uh, you know, security is a critical part of it. So AWS is obviously infrastructure, um, but they also need solutions that allow to make sure that those companies that are developing on AWS are secure. And so we've integrated our Intel database into AWS Inspector. We have a lot of uh, offerings, very specific AWS offerings that are that our mutual customers can can leverage. Um, and we work very collaborative, collaboratively with AWS in not only our roadmap, our technical roadmap with them, but also our go-to-market side, which is very much aligned. And it's continue. We kind of, I say, we're in the second inning of that of that game. Uh, we got a lot more coming. Okay, but but well aligned. Give me in a customer example, if you will, of a joint AWS sneak customer that you've really helped with this transition, shifting security lap. They're building uh, yeah. apps in the AWS cloud very successfully and securely. Yeah, and well, there's uh, almost every company has some relationship with you know of size with AWS, and so you know for us, it's one of the first questions we ask anybody coming in is what's your relationship with one of the cloud vendors and. That inevitably it'll be, yeah, we have a relationship with AWS. And so, you know, we talk about our roadmap that we have with AWS. They can buy our software through the AWS marketplace. You know, you could leverage kind of your EDPs that you have with AWS to, to kind of build that scale. So we're very technically aligned uh, with the AWS platform. And, um, and so you look at financial services, we've done a fair amount of financial services, insurance companies, that have all kind of moving more workloads to AWS. Some of them have been our customers before, some of them separate from AWS, and now they're kind of, hey, can I use all my, move my apps over and leverage Sneak in that process? So this is, it's now, uh, you know, good, a good part of our, of our, of our uh, go-to-market motion is coming through AWS Marketplace as well. So it's been a very successful partnership on both parties. A lot of momentum there. Talk to me, speaking of momentum, we talked about the, the uh, funding raise this year alone, tremendous momentum going on for the company. What are some of the things that we can expect to see from Sneak in calendar year 22? Yeah, well, I mean, the aggressive roadmap. I mean, that's still, you know, we, we, see, we see, we have four modules today. We started with one and we added to, you know, can, that was open source security. We added container security, infrastructure as code security. Then we added code security or a SAS solution. We see modules five, six, seven coming out. You know, we made an acquisition of, of, um, of drift, uh, drift technology adding into, kind of adding some more depth. So you're going to see just a, a lot more continued aggressiveness on our side as we scale both our engineering organically and inorganically, but also, you know, the go-to-market. I mean, now we're, we're almost in, you know, all the major countries around the world, and we're going to continue to invest in building that out and going where the developers are. There are 28 million developers around the world. Our goal is to reach every one of them as fast as we possibly can with our free or paid or whatever way is to get to 28 million developers as fast as we can. So for those developers watching, where do you want to point them to go to, to start their free trial? Just go right to our website, sneak.io, and you can get all of our products you know, free. Uh, you can chat, schedule demos. You can do everything very easily. Uh, and it's very self-service. So you know, it's it's if you don't want to talk to anybody, you don't have to talk to anybody. But if you do, we have plenty of people you can talk to. That's our... That's our world, Friction, frictionless motion. Frictionless and contactless at the same time. Peter, congratulations on the growth, the momentum of the company, what you're doing, the evolution of the partnership with AWS and that lofty goal to reach 28 million developers. I'm looking forward to our next conversation to see where you are on that progress. Same thing, same here, Lisa. Thank you for your time. Oh, likewise. For Peter McKay, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. Stick around, more great content coming up next.